Hello gamers, I am Mike the Zorch, and today I'm reacting to another Inside Star Citizen. This one is Fuel Injection. So they may be talking about uh, changes to refueling. Now, how refueling worked in Star Citizen up until now is you would land in a you would land in, in a hangar. On, in the large star port, or you would land on the pad on the space stations. They're going to replace the pads eventually with a uh, with an actual a dock to actually park your ship inside because they want to get rid of the pads because of pad rammers, because of trolls who hit people's ships from the outside and destroy them. But um, you would land there after getting permission to land, of course. And then once the ATC, a very primitive ATC that they have in the game right now, announces that you have landed, you then go into to your Moby Glass and you go to a special screen where you select um, refueling, two different fuels, your, your standard fuel, which is hydrogen fuel, your quantum fuel, and then you can do repairs and you can do a rearm of your ship. They're gonna change how you can um, refuel your ship which means they are moving that to a new UI. They're moving that to the building blocks UI, most likely. Uh, they were going to do a kiosk inside stations and starports where you could refuel. I don't know how it's gonna work. I haven't watched this episode yet, but uh, there's probably some other things they're gonna cover. There's been some other development in Star Citizen lately that has the community up in arms. Uh, I did, me and Tiger did go through the message that they sent to the community, the message that they put out. The reason for them being up in arms is completely wrong there's no reason why the community should be angry because it's not it, what they did what cig did wasn't because of some because of something they did the community thinks that cig is blaming them where they're not they're blaming the youtubers they're blaming the content creators who were taking what was in the roadmap and and Treating the what's in the roadmap as a promise. Tigra and I are going to be recording a special uh, video about this. We're going to be doing an episode of The Professor with uh, him as a special guest on the show. It's going to be really good. We're going to be recording that tomorrow. But let's get to this and uh, what Jared's got for us. The experience we're trying to build with refueling is a bit of an interconnectedness between the players. It's the first player to player ah, trade. That, that ship's been in the game for a long time. Refueling is another support career that we think is very We've important. We've been waiting for this. Time. That's Until the... Now, uh, ships were pretty much able to get fuel that was the uh the starfarer that has been in the game for a long time it's a it's a fuel ship it's a it has uh refuel binary capabilities on board and it's supposed to be capable of refueling other vessels We're finally getting that but that's finally being worked on out of the thin air and that was not the goal for all ships. That was supposed to be something very specific to certain ships that have that functionality. Right now, all of the ships that, let's say, are basic fighter ship, they're not going to have that functionality. They will have to rely on someone bringing fuel to them. Hmm. In our first iteration of refueling right now, we sadly don't have the quantum beacon set up yet. So if you run out of fuel, you ask for someone in chat who owns a Starfarer to come by and refuel you. This person with a Starfarer needs to get fuel from any station. 
That'll be expensive. Instead of buying it into the ship's fuel Ooh. tank, you buy it into the Starfarer's fuel pods, which can be filled either with quantum fuel or hydrogen fuel, depending on whatever is the need on the market. We do this through the... Oh, you're going to have to... Updated. So the same way you use you're to gonna have to basically know what's in demand extra controls that will let you uh, decide what goes inside That's... a fuel tank Once that is definitely building blocks that you want to adjust the price that the others have to pay for the fuel that you have in your stuff there now wow at this point the refueler player has to fly all the way to where the person is stranded in the middle of nowhere and the docking operation can begin this is going to be important for, uh, for Pyro. Once they have talked with you, they use the same Mobi Glass interface to make a request for fuel. Oh, they changed the Mobi Glass interface. Cool. And we're introducing something called an escrow service that basically takes the money for the transaction and only starts paying it out as the transaction advances. So if for whatever reason, uh, you either cancel the transaction or pirates show up and you have to do an emergency and dock, there should be no money loss as fuel is paid for as it is dispensed. Hmm. Once the payment request was received on the Starfarer, you have to open the dedicated fuel pods that hold the dedicated fuel uh -huh. for that transfer and activate the nozzle. You have to remember that uh, the target ship will only take as much fuel as they have actually paid for. Uh, so if you, uh, if, you know, if somebody has asked for 500 units of quantum and you open the nozzle at full throttle and, you know, send 2000 away, well, then most of that fuel is just going to spill into space and you're going to lose it. And so there's a bit of, uh, yes, people want somebody who's very fast and efficient, but don't burn your own fuel. Ah. Once the entire fuel was delivered to the dock ship Damn, they're, the they're turning this into a mini game almost dock and both parties can go that way right now we are still iterating a lot over the ui parts what we don't want to do is throw all the data directly in your face it should all be readable and accessible for all the players as we keep delving further and further into other solar systems, we do not want to create this gamey thing where there's always fuel for everything. There's always everything you need. You mm. might end up in systems where there is nothing. That's there what they find to have systems with no nothing in it. Not even people. Yeah. And You're going to need to refuel somewhere. Of resources. And if you want to get a major endeavor going, you have to think of all the logistics of it. And fuel is one big part of that. This opens the door for the fuel rats to come from Elite Dangerous over to Star Citizen. Refueling is the next major milestone for life in the Persistent Universe and is making its long-awaited debut in Star Citizen's upcoming Alpha 317 release as we continue our journey towards Pyro throughout this year. And up next, a new way to traverse the surface of any planet or moon Let's find out more about the recently revealed hover quad from Consolidated oh. Allen. Yeah, uh, you can't buzz me now because everybody already knows. Yeah, this just this the showed up out of nowhere. Is, uh, what do I want to say? It is an all-terrain vehicle. I've forgotten the word I want to use. Uh, exactly what it sounds like. Hovers. <laughs> Core. So this is quite a bit different, uh, both visually and philosophically, to a lot of our other ground vehicles. Our other two grav levs, both of which are armed and shielded, the hovercore has neither. It's much more focused on the ability to travel across the surface of the planet rather than start fights or bring a friend along. Hmm. It's got an inventory on board, so anything small you find you can put on board. Okay. That would be good for like um because it's got a, a wider wheel base, mining so on the ground or bigger grab levs it's able to account for those changing variables over a rocky surface whereas something like the locks yes it can go like a bullet in a straight line but 
if it catches something the wrong way, it's going to lose stability a lot, lot quicker than the hover quad's going to. Cool. It's something we've actually had in the pipeline for quite a while. It was a nice little add-on that we did as part of the Consolidated Outlands Nomad concept development. The Nomad can already carry the rock, which is a wheeled mining vehicle. So they can carry that. This is actually, this quad, the hover quad is actually shorter than the Drake Dragonfly. I think it's also shorter than the Nox. So it can, you can fit quite a few of them. Uh, only, only problem is, is they're not armed. They didn't arm them like they did the, um, like they did the Dragonfly. I don't think the Nox has armaments either. I think the Dragonfly is the only one with arms. With art with a, a weapon makes it like uh the speeder from star wars the speeder bike from uh return of the jedi concept for the nomad was designed with the hover quad in the back so that was one of the big concerns we had when developing the vehicles to make sure that it could in fact fit in the back and you can drive it in the back oh yeah that is the footprint's not much bigger than the uh the footprint of that thing is not much bigger than the rock then. A good sort of use case for this is you've landed on a planet in your parent vehicle, um, but for whatever reason you do not want to carry on in that vehicle, or the, the place you want to actually go is just too compact, maybe down a cave. So you need cool. something to transport you to your destination. This kind of gives you the ability to really enjoy and feel the environment more than you would when you're 6,000 feet above it, you know? You're right there, you're down at the base, and you can touch and see and smell everything around you. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that refueling brings with it a new journey towards additional support mechanics in Star Citizen's persistent universe. Talked only about refueling from the Starfair. Didn't talk about refueling from or ports and space stations. Maybe, maybe that similar interface will work the same way from there. They didn't say that it was would or not. We'll see in 317. But they do need to definitely improve that because uh, recently it's been working fine, but occasionally it doesn't work correctly. That's because of the interface that they've they've been using. They have a lot a lot of legacy stuff in the game. From because there were two versions of Star Citizen. There was the old original version that they were going to launch originally. That was going to be much more like Freelancer, uh, more like Wing Commander uh, with with some with space legs. And then the community. You know, voted, said, let's take this thing further, even further beyond. And, uh, and then they literally started from scratch. And they built upon that uh, foundation of the old legacy code. And they've been having to go back and replace a lot of those old systems to make the new stuff work. And that's been taking a long time. It's taken them 10 years. To get this far that it's time to dust off your star fair ahead of the next big race like the stand in seven or the damar rally and that the hover quad is here to expand the universe's gravel of offerings now don't forget that xeno thread is returning check cool. out the recently published this month in star citizen post on the robert space industries.com website for details on everything that's happening in february and tune into twitch tomorrow to see director of graphics engineering ali brown discuss all things graphical on Star Citizen Live tomorrow okay. at 10 a.m. That's Pacific. already for inside Star Citizen. That's already viewed. It's on their website we'll already. It's on their um. It's on their channel already. So I'm gonna go watch that here in a little bit. But uh, not a big episode this time. I was hoping we would get a little more detail. Um. As I said, there's that drama about the roadmap. 
uh, where they changed a lot of things on the roadmap and we're going to be discussing that uh, in the professor this weekend and it's going to be a really good episode i i, I expect because tiger's got a lot of things to say because he's noticed the same things that that cig has been talking about he's noticed things about uh, what various YouTubers do, you know, Eradicator and Board Gamer and all them do, and the changes that were made to the roadmap basically reflect what, reflect that. We'll, we'll, we'll explain it in greater detail uh, when on The Professor uh, this weekend, but uh this has been another reaction from Inside Star Says not a big one. Not a not a big one. 317 is the next update coming along. Uh I don't know what's all in it. I haven't looked at the new roadmap of exactly what they're going to have in it, what's going to be working. But it's expected to be a pretty big one. And what it looks like. What what it looks like right now based on what I have seen from other channels covering the covering the current roadmap and also talking about what CIG is currently working on, what their teams are actually working on right now in the company. One, they are prioritizing Squadron 42. Squadron 42 is nearly finished and they need to get that out the door to prove that they can actually make a game. And two, we're coming up on the 10-year anniversary of Star Citizen, and they need to put something big out. And what I think they're wanting to do is finally get 4.0 out the door. And 4.0 means pyro. And we will also likely get Nyx. Because the Nyx system is, is a smaller star system, it's smaller than Stanton. And, the, and they already have a landing zone already made. They already have a planet already made. They already, everything is already done in Nyx because it's such a smaller, less complex star system. And you have to get to it via Pyro. So we're likely to get two new star systems in 4.0 or at least Nyx and then in 4.x get Nyx after that there could be other star systems because as they said there are some where they will be just planets and no space stations no human habitation it'll just be an empty star system that you can just go through and explore where there's literally nothing there but planets and asteroids no civilization and that's why that you have to have the uh it's like the Starfarer or uh, large or carriers like the Liberator and ships like the Odyssey, which can transport vessels over long distances that couldn't normally make the, make the trip. Because Pyro is going to be a much bigger star system than Stanton. It's going to be huge. And there are some ships that just can't make that journey. And... There aren't going to be all these refueling stops all over that system. You're going to have to rely upon people out there flying, re, you know, refueling ships, you know, flying starfarers to refuel you out, out there in the black. So, interesting stuff. I want, I want one of those hover quads. I definitely do. I wish it was armed. I would have preferred that it have weapons, but it's fine. It's smaller than a than a dragonfly and a nox. Actually, yeah, the nox nox is pretty big, but it's smaller than a dragonfly. Dragonfly is like it's small. It's compact, but it's long. I mean, it's it's way too long for what it is. It needs to be shorter. And that hover quad is much shorter than 
than the than the uh, Drake Dragonfly. So it can actually fit into a lot more ships. You could probably fit one of those inside of a um. You might be able to fit one in Avenger Titan. It's hard to get a hover bike in one of those. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I've been Mike Desorch. Uh, there will be more reactions to Inside Star Citizen. I do these every week. There'll be another one coming out. Uh, next, they release these uh, very early Friday mornings on their channel. So I'll be... I will be watching them again next week. And until then, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon to uh, get notifications. Watch for the episode of The Professor coming this weekend. We're going to be definitely doing that. That's going to be an important one. And, uh, also, I want to announce that I will be doing Lost Ark when it finally comes out. I have got I I broke my own rule and I decided to do a pre I decided to pre-order it. I usually do not pre-order games, but I decided to grab this. It was like only 14. It was like 15 bucks to do it. And I'm going to be playing Lost Ark starting the 11th and i'm going to be streaming that so anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you all next time